Michael Cole here in the Royal Examiner studio, and with me today is Dr. Jeffrey Alban. Good Jeff, to see you this morning. Jeff, Jeff is better, I guess, than sure. Dr. Alban, but... Uh, the doctor's only formal. <laughs> I just ask people to call me Jeff. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, we're, it's, you know, Christmas is in the air, and it's before you know it... True, it's in the air, but it's also 81 degrees outside today. <laughs> but I'll take it. you take it, exactly. I see you come dressed for the warm weather. Um, Jeff is the conductor of the Blue Ridge Singers, yep. and if you've never seen them perform, I'm getting chill. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Uh, these performances will do that for you. Actually, me too. I've had the goosebumps a couple of times so far this semester during our rehearsals, which is yeah. always a good thing. Yeah, yeah. When you feel when the rehearsals come off good, you feel pretty good about it, and it's going to happen. I, it's that choral feeling, and when you get it, it's the the best thing ever. And I'm feeling very good about yeah. our three concerts coming up. Yeah. And before you know it, it'll be here. So there's happening in December. Correct. And we got three. We have three concerts, as usual, for Christmas. We're going to start them off on December 3rd. Um, but big, big important item to remember. Our Sunday concerts this year are going to start at 3 p.m. In years past, they've always been at 4. But with some, we had some scheduling, logistical issues. So we're moving the concerts back to 3 o'clock. And I think this would be a net positive for I everybody. Think so. Yes. Uh, it'll be earlier in the day. You can probably still get home while it's light out. Yeah. Um, but the Sunday, December 3rd, will be at the First Baptist Church of Winchester at 3 o'clock. And then we'll bring the show to Front Royal on Friday, December 8th at 7.30. And then Sunday again, uh, December 10th, at Trinity Episcopal Church in Upperville again at 3 o'clock. Right. All good venues. Excellent venues. Yes, it's great. And I can recall uh, been many of these ones at the Presbyterian Church. These uh, performances or concerts, because that's they are concerts. They're, it's it's nice to even have an intermission, right? Actually, we do not have an intermission. Oh, really? You're not doing it now? No. Re- the concert will run about an hour. Um, yeah. And I'll talk between all the pieces so that right. everybody Maybe knows. that's what it seems like an intermission. <laughs> right. Well, we don't want anybody to get bored or bogged down. Right. And I've always found with the intermission, you know, you don't want people to get up and leave. Yes, that's true. And uh, we will keep you uh, entertained the entire time, I promise. Well, if it's anything like your past performances, you have a little bit of the, the repertoire is varied and you have something for everybody. Always. Um, I, I always program the concerts with my parents in mind. And I I usually say this at every concert. My parents' comment to me was always, sing something we know. So my parents are not musicians, but once I got into the music career, sure. they started, started to catch on. But even still, sing something we know. So there will always be something that everyone in that audience will know, I promise you. Yeah. And um, this year, the... Um, We'll call it the ground level piece that we're singing is a very jazzy arrangement of Jingle Bells by J. David Moore. Um, it's very upbeat and it's got a whole bunch of text painting in it and the choir becomes the bell, quite literally. Well, they're always, it's very, um, it's very entertaining and it gives, like you say, a little bit of something for everybody. No matter where you're at on the spectrum of music, uh, you cover it mm-hmm. and it's always good. And I think people do appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it's something that you don't see every day and you don't hear on the radio, you know. And, That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to present, the, the title of the concert is called uh, On Christmas Night, okay. which comes from a title of the same piece of music by Bob Chilcott, who's an English okay. composer, master, master arranger. And um, I chose this because he takes common Christmas carols and combines them with his own original music and text settings. And sometimes the, the carol is down front and center, but in some of the other movements, it's buried in there. But if you listen very closely, it, it is prominent enough that you should recognize it. And it's an eight-movement work, and it's for choir, soloists, and organ. Uh, Dan Miller, mm-hmm. our accompanist, he'll be the organist for the performances. And all of our soloists for this concert are going to come out of the choir, which is one of my favorite things about Blue Ridge Singers. Um, we, we have the depth and the ability within the singers themselves to carry all these solo roles. And I do make the singers audition for the spots. And I'll tell you, this year was the hardest decisions I've ever had to make as to who was going to get them. Um, but I assure you, you will not be disappointed. Everything is coming out just marvelously. I see the title, On Christmas Night. So the arrangements kind of like carry you through the night. Like that's the impression I get from the title. The... The piece itself, overarchingly, is on the darker, quieter side, but it does have some, it has two bright and very exciting with a lot of 
a lot of fast rhythm uh, movements to it. But there's, the contrast is is equal across the whole whole piece. So okay. you won't get bored at any time, I promise. Well, the Christmas uh, season brings a lot of venues to our community, but this one highlights, I think, people that show up. It's always a full house. For sure. Uh, and there's no charge. Yeah. The concerts are free. We do ask for a, a free will donation if you're able to give it to $15. Sure. Um, just to support the ongoing efforts of the choir and to cover our basic costs. Right. But, we're just happy to have the audience there. Right. Um, sometimes Christmas is almost synonymous with choir. Right. People put those two things together, so it's there's always a great um, turnout for every concert. And I've um, been thinking the last two couple of years, we've got to start thinking about maybe alternate venues or more concerts to accommodate <laughs> everybody that's there. Yeah. Uh, but it is refreshing for the choir to look out and see the audience there, eager. And ready to hear the choir. You know, it's you mentioned how good, how well the uh, rehearsals go. But then when you mention the audience, I know the performers feed off the audience. Absolutely. And you think they did well at the rehearsal? Think what they're going to do at the performance. Yeah, and it it makes the singing that much better. Oh yeah, because the singers are just energized. Yeah. Um, and we always have good audiences for Blue Ridge yeah, Singers. So. Great, great response. It's it's a great service that you do. It's a lot of work, a lot of rehearsal. They just don't show up and open the music and sing it. And uh, In fact, as mentioned, you actually have music. <laughs> yeah, well, we do work. We start the first Tuesday in September, and we've gone every week since then. And in the fall, it works out to be about 13 weeks. In the spring, it'll be 16 weeks. Um, but we make the rehearsals fun. Uh, it's a learning environment for the singers, but at the same time, we always work on making sure that the audience is engaged. I want to also add that as part of the concert, we are going to have two audience carols. We are celebrating our 15th anniversary this year uh, of being in existence here in the area. And uh, what better way than to get the audience involved in the singing? Right. So uh, nothing too hard and no one will have to audition. <laughs> Speaking of auditions, you want people to join the singers. Sure. We're actually running at record levels this year. Uh, we have 43 singers enrolled, which is the highest it's ever been. And th this last week, actually, I've received three more audition requests from right. new people. Um, so it's great to see the interest. And like I said, the the ability level <coughs> of, of the singers in the choir is top notch. And, and these are our local community next door neighbors sure they come from front royal winchester stevens city uh we've even got singers that come from warrington now um so it, it's attracting people from all over the area well, let's mention i noticed down here at the bottom of your little brochure you have a few people helping you this year absolutely well they've been helping us for quite a few years but um especially as we're celebrating the 15th anniversary of the choir just a shout out to the town of front royal the Virginia Commission on the Arts, and of course the Marion Park Lewis Foundation, who has been supporting us all these years, and we are indeed grateful for their support and financial assistance to help all of this be possible. Because yeah. there's a lot of expense. Buy this music, you just don't download it off the internet. <laughs> well, you, you can do that, but you'll still pay for it. Um, you know, music is not cheap, especially on the, on the classical music side of things. It's unbelievable. Um, one little piece of music like this can almost cost you $6, and it's yeah. only... Four pages long. Yeah, yeah. But you're helping the cause. That's you know, right. You were, we're doing it. It's just a great work, and I do want to appreciate, uh, you know, tell you, uh, I think the community appreciates the effort the singers put up, and they see that in the performance. I'm sure that they do that. That's why they keep coming back, the sure. singers and the audience, both. Let's go over the dates one more time. Sunday, December 3rd at 3 p.m., 3 p.m. And that's at the First Baptist Church in Winchester. Correct. That's the big church there on Piccadilly Street with the big columns out right. front. Uh, you don't need to go up all the stairs. You can always park in the back and come in the back door. Much easier. Uh, and then Friday, December 8th at 7.30, Front Royal Presbyterian Church over on Luray Avenue. And then Sunday, December 10th, again at 3 o'clock at the Trinity Episcopal Church in Upperville. You can't miss it. I heard that's a great venue. It is. The organ is spectacular. The room is great. Um, they love it. They love the reverberation in the room. Correct. <laughs> it always helps the choir to be able to yeah. hear themselves. You, you've doubled the voices. <laughs> Maybe not quite double, but it does enhance them, doesn't it? When they can hear themselves, they yes. sing better. Yeah, they do that. Well, uh, again, Jeff, I really appreciate you coming in and sharing that. We'll put this information out 
uh, put all the dates and times and links to your website, and uh, and hopefully we'll drive some uh, more audience to your concerts. That would be great. And the website www.bluridsingers.org. You can find all the concert information there. Um, you can find audition information there. If you're interested in advertising in our program, you can see the info there and actually purchase the ads. Um, the deadline for that, by the way, is November 15th, if you're interested in supporting the choir that way. Um, the program's high quality, and yeah. your ad will look good. Yeah, looks um, good. One other thing to add, is next spring, I'm looking forward to coming back here to talk with Mike again, because this is really going to be the showstopper for our 15th anniversary, and uh, we'll be performing with orchestra and a very unique instrument, which I'll not say much more about until spring, but it's coming. Come to our... Christmas concerts now, you'll see the little blurb in the program about the spring concerts. It's always entertaining. It'll be a blast. I can't wait to do it. All right. Again, Jeff, I really appreciate you coming in, and we will see you at your concerts. Sounds good. Thank right. you for Thank having you. me here. Thank you.